Sometimes differences can be quite obvious and clearly visible, but sometimes they're harder to see, hidden in the background. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, I am just ramping up the intrigue when it comes to my cold opens, aren't I? Uh, yes, it, it kind of worked out serendipitously, I guess you'd say. Uh, so you see the, the discussion part of this video, the main part, uh, I had been uh, working on for two or three months now. I've been, it's been uh, on my mind, and I've been working on writing the, the essay, as it were. Uh, so this was originally going to be a video all of its own. And the uh, the great big whatever it is that I uh, was teasing about uh, in my cold open that I'm going to be revealing at the end of this video was originally going to be its own video, its own little thing, uh, but it ended up being ready uh, much sooner than I had anticipated. Well, either that or I just ended up dragging my feet in preparing uh, this video here. But anyway, uh, however it worked out, it worked out so that I was able to combine both into one video. Uh, and it's very uh, uh, serendipitous, as I said, because both subjects are connected. And as you could see in the title of this video, it is talking about uh, cassettes, my relationship with cassettes, uh, reconsidering the format as a, a recorded music format. And so, yes, this uh, little discussion here at the beginning is going to be basically uh, me looking back at my history of the formats of music that I listen to uh, with a particular emphasis on cassettes, as the title suggests. But uh, even though this discussion is going to center on the cassette, the compact disc is actually the recorded music format that I probably have the strongest connection to, and there are a few reasons for that. My first adult job coincided with the rise in popularity of that format. Uh, with my first couple of paychecks, I bought my first boombox model CD player and a fistful of CDs. And for most people, when you start buying things with your own hard-earned adult money, you tend to take better care of them. And indeed, it was the first format that I made sure to handle and store properly, because I wanted them to last a long time. Now, I of course had a small selection of records when I was a kid, and a healthy number of cassettes that I had accumulated over my childhood, funded mostly by my parents' allowance. But not only are your tastes in music mostly uninformed and unrefined when you're a kid, but the fact that I hadn't yet learned to really take proper adult-like care of my records and tapes almost certainly left me with tainted and inaccurate memories of how inferior those formats supposedly were. I sort of saw my return to the LP format coming. Uh, the vinyl resurgence had already been building for years by the time I made up my mind to include a good turntable in my new sound system when replacing my old stereo in 2017. And I knew by then that my responsible adult behavior, along with the stuff I was learning online about quality turntables and routine record care, would lead to a very different and much better relationship with the format than I'd had as a kid. But the format that I never thought I'd ever consider returning to, let alone start feeling actual nostalgia for, was the cassette. That clunky, vulnerable, inefficient, and sonically inferior format, which I gladly left behind as soon as the compact disc entered my life, and I swore I'd never return to it again. Why and how did it win back my heart, or at least a part of it? It took me weeks to figure out why. The answer finally dawned on me when I thought about how I listened to and consumed music at the time, as opposed to how I do now. You see, back then, my listening was much more song-based. There were a few exceptions, of course, but for the most part, I'd listen to the full album a couple of times, maybe three times, after which I'd gravitate toward a favorite song or two on each album and pretty much ignore the rest. That's why I fell in love with the CD. You could snap to your favorite song instantly without having to fast forward and play and rewind and play and fast forward again until you reached the right point on the tape. I made mixtapes from cassettes, and it was fun, but it was time-consuming. The instant gratification and precision of the CD format was a dream come true for the audio cherry picker that I was. And I made plenty of mixtapes, and later mix CDs, of just my own personal greatest hits of my favorite artists. And for a long time, they actually got played more often than the studio albums I assembled them from. But I've noticed in the last 10 years or so that I'm much more of an album listener now. And it must have happened gradually, because I don't remember any pivotal moment when my listening habits changed. Uh, I suspect that a few different things figured into or accelerated it. Uh, for one thing, my renewed interest in vinyl uh, sort of galvanized my affection for the album experience. Uh, but I'm sure that inheriting my sister's CD collection played a part in it, too. Uh, ever since, as, as soon as I got her CDs or knew I was going to get her CDs, I knew I wanted to listen to each and every one of them from start to finish. But I'm suspecting that my age also factors into it. 
You see, even though the instant gratification that streaming provides has made many of us more prone to impatience and shorter attention spans, I've come to appreciate the patience of letting the album tracks play out in between the big hit singles. Not only that, but the other kind of patience that comes with realizing that many songs and albums are not meant to grab you by the ears instantly, but instead slowly grow on you and reveal their charms with repeated listening. And another thing, and here we go into the more philosophical stuff, when you get to be older, the longevity of some of your possessions becomes less important. Uh, another selling point for CDs, for instance, uh, along with the ones I already mentioned, was the fact that they last a lifetime. And when I was in my early 20s, the rest of my life felt far away. But now that the fact that I won't live forever is more apparent, uh, another thing that came into focus with the passing of my sister, I'm more accepting of how transient or ephemeral the nature of analog audio media like the LP and cassette are. But then going back for a moment to the tainted childhood memories I mentioned a few minutes ago, three of the reasons I swore I'd never go back to cassettes were because they were vulnerable to being erased by magnets, they sounded lousy, and they were prone to breaking. Now, dismissing the first one, it's very unlikely that you'll get them close enough to any magnet powerful enough to zap them. Let's take on the other two arguments. Starting with sound quality. The only tape players I'd had back when I was a kid were either boomboxes or Walkmans. Now, we all know how tinny and wimpy the speakers were that were built into those boomboxes back in the day, and none of the headphones that I'd had back then were very good at all. So it wasn't until I brought home that free Pioneer cassette deck last fall and hooked it up to my Yamaha receiver that I ever had a tape deck with a decent set of speakers connected to it. And the sound really, really surprised me when I put that first tape in. And as for the breaking thing, that supposedly huge number of tapes that got tangled or stretched or twisted or eaten or otherwise destroyed by cannibalistic machines, when I really sat down and thought about it, out of the literally thousands of times I must have inserted, recorded, played, and removed tapes, I could really distinctly remember maybe three times at most that it ended in tragedy. That's a psychological thing, by the way. Our brains tend to remember the tragic and traumatic events much more distinctly than the millions of times that things go totally okay. So, as it turns out, out of my three major objections to the cassette tape that carried over into adulthood, one is outmoded, another is misguided, and the last is misremembered. I'm much more of an album listener now than I used to be. I was hearing tapes on mostly crappy speakers, and 99% of my tapes survived their tours of duty completely intact. And then there's the sensory and tactile experience, separate from the music itself, that goes along with all physical media. There's just something about the rattling of the parts inside a cassette housing, the clickety-clack of the tape going in and out of the case, and the tappity-tap of the cases against each other. Because I don't have a second case to do as an example. And then let's not forget the J card. Some releases just had a simple one-sided card with the album art and track listing and nothing else, but the more extravagant releases had full-color J cards printed on both sides that kept unfolding until they were 12 inches long or more. Uh, with some of them, it could take half the playtime of the album to read all the liner notes. And if again, if I'd been thinking, I would have had an example of one of those big, great big J cards with me, but well, there you go. But anyway, yes, uh, color me surprised that I have reconsidered and re-embraced the cassette format. Uh, a year ago, I never would have imagined such a thing happening, and it was really only because of a happy accident that I did. But I have no complaints. Uh, I'll admit that it's powered as much by nostalgia as by anything else, but it also adds interest and variety to my listening routine, which I can only see as a good thing. I will never stop loving the compact disc, and my appreciation for and collection of vinyl records is growing steadily, but there's plenty of room in my life for cassettes too, both figuratively and literally. Which leads us into the big reveal that I promised you at the beginning of this video, the grand finale, the coup de grace, the icing on the cake, if you will, of this video. You see, back when I first got that uh, Pioneer cassette deck last fall, I had started to very slowly accumulate a small selection of tapes, uh, you know, along with the five or six that I already had that I never got rid of, and I had a friend build me a very basic two-shelf cassette rack out of wood. Uh, it held about two dozen cassettes, or three dozen cassettes, about 36 tapes, and I figured, okay, at the rate I'm gaining cassettes, it's probably going to last me forever, or a great, great long while anyway. But then, a couple of months ago, uh, my mother's friend Sue offered me that collection of 250, 300 cassette tapes, 
and I foolishly accepted even though I had no place to put them. And so that made me realize, okay, I need to devise a much more capacitous storage solution for my tapes and I need to do it fast. So, but the problem is my room uh, does not have a lot of space in it. Uh, I considered getting a another one of the tall, slender uh, CD rack cabinets that my compilation CDs are on and they have adjustable shelves so I can adjust them for, for cassettes. But the problem was even though its footprint is only like one and a half, maybe two square feet at most, pretty much every bit of uh, real estate in my room that's against the wall that I could put this cabinet, there's either a light switch or a used power outlet in the way. So there was basically nowhere to put it. So that idea was out the window. I decided, okay, maybe I can di make do with my existing shelves, purge some CDs, get rid of some CDs, and make room enough room for the tapes. And I, I started doing so. I actually got rid of several, oh, a few dozen, four or five dozen CDs maybe, and got quite a bit of uh, trade credit for them. Uh, but still, I realized pretty quickly that that was not going to give me nearly the shelf space that I needed for tapes. And so, okay, existing shelves, no, uh, new floor standing cabinet, no. What other options do I have? And even the wall space in my room, uh, whatever wall space is not occupied with a cabinet against it, has a poster or a picture of some sort on it and is not big enough to really matter anyway. Except maybe this spot here. Now see there is a picture on here, but uh, this picture, in case you don't know, is a canvas print just stretched over a plain wooden frame that's open on the back. So uh, the old mental juices started getting flowing and one thing led to another, which I'll, I'll tell the story in just a minute, but uh, check this out. What do you think? Huh? Yes, I came up with the basic concept of a cabinet being able to, you know, being on the wall and uh, tucked behind this basic wooden frame. Uh, and I suggested it to my brother, maybe he could build it because he's really good at building stuff. And uh, he actually refined the concept by suggesting doors that hold another bunch of CDs, nearly doubling the unit's uh, storage capacity. So, uh, but in the end, he had too much stuff on his plate, so he was not able to build it. So I um, asked this friend of mine who happens to be a retired record store owner. What he does, he does uh, builds bird houses and other things uh, in his retirement for friends and family. And he also does uh, build some to, to sell as a little side hustle in his retirement. And he has a whole lot of fun with that. And he is extremely talented. Uh, so yeah, I asked him to build this for me uh, for, for a modest fee, of course. It was a commission work. So, and yeah, it, he built it exactly to specs. And I am so incredibly pleased with it. And the capacity on this thing is just this. The back cabinet is holds about 500, maybe a little bit less, because the way I designed it was five rows of 40 tapes. And so these, uh, the, each of the doors holds a little bit less than, than half that. So uh, probably 350 at least tapes. So I can't, I can't imagine ever needing any more space than what this thing has given me. The, the tapes on this, uh, this door, the left-hand door, are the ones that I've already listened to and are sorted and uh, I am keeping for sure. Everything else is the stuff that's left from uh, Sue's collection that I have not listened to yet. Rock and Pop and Country are here, and uh, instrumental, easy listening, classical, and Christmas CDs, holiday CDs, are in this right-hand door, which you can't see because of the camera angle. Well, you can sort of see it. So yeah, even if I kept all of these, which is not likely, I'm going to have so much space left over, I will never need another cabinet, more storage for tapes than I have here. Uh, you might be able to see these on the bottom row here. This and the entire bottom row and then up to here on this row are empty cassette cases. I ordered a bunch of uh, new empty cases from a, an online store because a lot of the ones that came with Seuss tapes were kind of bashed up and messed up and stuff. So uh, yeah, plenty of spare empty tape uh, boxes on hand as well as room for all these tapes and even more. So I am a super thrilled, super happy camper. Uh, yes, he, he built it incredibly quickly. I was so impressed with how fast he built it, and so I was able to do this video, and I, I knew I wanted to show you guys this thing as as soon as I asked him to do it. Yeah, this turned out better than I ever imagined it would be. And as you can see, the, uh, the front is completely uh, flat, no poles or knobs or hardware of any kind, so that the picture will sit back on it. And it just, it just kind of hangs there. I just kind of feel with my finger the midway point so I can line the top of the treble clef up with the midpoint.
I figured that's a good, uh, as good a uh, marker as any, right? But anyway, that'll do it for today, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.